a feeling of consternation accompanied the realization that the aerial spraying was going on worldwide, with people from all walks of life noticing the same thing at the same time, the dramatic change in climate, and detrimental effect on health. Still, it was a relief to know I wasn't the only one who was wise to it. There's a one in the sky. There is a one in the sky. It's a line. It's a line. And we want to know what makes it, huh? Yeah, why? Why is it there? Why is it there? We want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Here are some more chemtrails. North County, coastal San Diego. January, uh, sorry, February 6th. And uh, I haven't seen much spraying action over here, this part of California, but it's definitely happening today. Yeah, they're, they're definitely on a spraying mission today. I just walked up and watched you looking up at the sky, and I was out here documenting this. What do you think's going on with all this? Well, I, I mean, I've done some research online. I, uh, listen to Jeff France and Alex Jones and various other radio shows, independent news, and everybody's got some ideas about it. I, I think it's kind of, I just, I don't know what to think. I think they should be telling us what they're doing. Yeah. You know, especially with this global warming thing. What do you think? I don't know what to think, man. I just know they're putting something in our skies yeah. and, they're, and they're keeping quiet about it. Yeah. Just, and in fact, on, on uh, NASA's website, they have a, a thing now called Contrail Education. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh my God. Like, I don't remember Contrail education when I was younger. Why do we have to be educated about Contrail? It's, it's crazy, man. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. Are they messing with the weather? Are they, you know, are they, are they, uh, are they, are they putting something into the, our systems, you know? It's obvious. I mean, there's something going on. I mean, the cross patterns. I mean, there's just, planes don't follow these cross patterns. They just don't do this. You know, this is not, just not natural, man. Today is super obvious. I mean, how obvious do people look? I mean, how often do people look up into the sky and like actually pay attention to what's going on? Right. And they're more worried about going to work and taking care of their family and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just like, you know, this is. And to them, they look up. A lot of people just look up and they're like, "Oh, this is just clouds." Yeah. You know, or whatever. Or it's just it's, it's just contrails. You can, so you can just... see this one right here. It's just pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yep. It's just like. It's crazy, man. Just, I just, no, 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 man. It's just got me, got me thinking about it. Well, I mean, I guess all we can do is document it. We're all documenting. There's so many people across the United States using their cameras to document this stuff. Yep. And, you know, maybe if enough people hear about it, you know, something will happen. I don't know. I mean, at least we know that the government's doing something to us, doing something to the weather or whatever they're I mean, doing. Like, I mean, I don't remember it being like this. See how. Yeah, that, that haze up there. Here, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, that wasn't like that, like, ten years ago. Right. All of a sudden you see a black contrail. There's no trick of light there. When we look and compare, we can compare it to the other contrails that are being laid out in the sky today. This is a very active day. And a black trail. Looks like a snake. What the heck? Welcome to Working TV. I'm Libby Davies. 
If you believed that aircraft with secret government approval have been spraying noxious chemicals developed in U.S. military biological warfare laboratories on unsuspecting Canadians, would you be paranoid? Or if you yourself saw distinct plumes of chemtrails from this spraying, yet were told by Transport Canada that no such spraying was taking place, would you be delusional? You'd be absolutely correct, according to William Thomas, who has spent the last 14 months studying the chemtrails phenomenon. He's an award-winning journalist who recently wrote a book about the Gulf War syndrome. This is the strange cluster of illnesses all linked to a deterioration of the autoimmune system suffered by troops who received anthrax immunization before being deployed in the Gulf War. It's a lot like the chemtrail syndrome. Perhaps Thomas is a fraud. Perhaps his photographs and videotape evidence are all fakes. We don't know for sure and the mainstream media won't touch his story. Nevertheless, we're told that Project Censored USA, a respected media watchdog group, recently judged chemtrails to be one of the most underreported stories of the past year. So you be the judge. Here now is William Thomas on chemtrails. Tonight we're going to have a look at what is really ailing us. We're going to have a look at what is happening in the skies overhead, and we're going to talk about what we can do about that. In January 1999, I got a phone call from the managing editor of the Environment News Service, whom I worked for in the Gulf, and he said, please check out a story of a man named William Wallace, just over the border in Washington State, he lives in uh, eastern Washington, very remote region, he lives in a cabin with his wife, and Mr. Wallace has been talking about large airplanes overflying his house back and forth spraying plumes that look like contrails, the condensation trails we're all used to seeing, but unlike these ice crystal trails that form in the hot engines of jet aircraft above 33,000 feet, according to the U.S. military and Canadian aviation authorities, unlike these condensation trails that linger usually, not always, but almost always, for about 30 to 45 seconds, you see the pencil-thin trail a short distance behind the aircraft, disappearing like the wake behind a boat. Unlike these trails, the trails that uh, William Wallace and his wife Anne were seeing were broad white plumes. They lingered for hours. And as these aircraft began crisscrossing each other and forming a grid, these plumes gathered together and took a clear blue sky and made it opaque, hazy, milky, his animals sickened, his dogs died, his plants sickened, his wife became very ill. I was living in a small cabin uh, in the hills outside of Chimanus, and I came outside about 3.30 in the morning, very wired from this very intense presentation. Took a breath of air, beautiful night, stars, just started to relax, and I froze, giant X, right over the cabin. Now, I'm not paranoid or anything, <laughs> but when they started flying parallel patterns down the ridge right across from me over the next few weeks, I began to wonder. I began to wonder if maybe some people were sensitive about having this story exposed. Let's have a quick look at what we're talking about because pictures are always better than words. I don't know about you, but people continually tell me, oh, these are normal contrails, these are normal aircraft patterns. And I'm here to tell you tonight that if commercial airliner, airline pilots pulled this stunt, they would lose their license. Legal spacing for commercial airliners is three miles. I believe the X's are for satellite identification. Don't worry, it's just normal airline traffic. <laughs> And if you wait a few minutes, you'll watch and see these chemtrails start to spread out as they're doing here. And if you have ignored the phenomena for an hour and happen to look up, you'll probably think it's just clouds. But fog forms at ground level.